Okay, so now let's derive these guys, and then you just have to work on using them. But you should be able to derive them. We'll do a quick derivation. Mathematically, we could write a proof and, and do all this, but we know our functions are differentiable, continuous functions, and so we can get away with it. We're going to derive it using calculus, and these other, this table that we've done here, these two definitions, the definition of velocity and acceleration. The trick is, and the thing you have to remember, because uh, you know, when you're first learning it, like where do you start? You gotta be efficient on an exam, so you have to know where to start. The way you start is work backwards. You start with the definition of acceleration, and you work backwards to the definition of velocity. There's some algebra, not much, that will kind of bypass. I'll show you. All right, so here we go. Let's start. Constant acceleration, first conceptualize it. Um, let me see. Um, I could have this thing going and walk like that. Is it accelerating? Well, probably slowing down. It's wound up. I don't know if the acceleration is constant. So maybe I could model it. And often we will model things as constant acceleration, even though it may not be a constant acceleration. If I take a baseball, there's, there's different parts. While I'm throwing it, I'm pushing on it. I'm clearly speeding it up, hopefully, otherwise I, when I let go, it's just going to drop. But, so as I push, I speed it up. There's that part of the process. Then I let go, and I'm not touching it. And yet, does its direction change? Sure. And does its speed change? Sure. It slows down and speeds up, up and down. And so we'll analyze that. Is the acceleration constant? Pretty much if we neglect air resistance. Otherwise, it's not. So this is a great model for many cases, and it actually works for some cases. So um, if I did this one as constant acceleration, then there would be the part here that has one acceleration during any time during the throw. And then when I let go, the acceleration would be different, and I'd have to use these again separately. And I'll show you the tips on this. How do, we, uh, how do we have constant acceleration? Well, you can have it on a ramp, for example. This guy is balanced here. Um, and if I want to make it accelerate, we'll talk about this after we do kinematics, I can have it add some mass to it over here, and it will speed up. If I go down, it slows down and speeds up slows down, speeds up, okay? And we'll talk about the acceleration on the ramp. I can change the acceleration by changing the angle. So you might guess that I have a larger angle here, I'll have a larger value for acceleration. But if it's a straight line, it's one dimension, okay? It's one dimension because it's moving along there, and the acceleration value might be large or small, but it is constant. So, all right, let's do this thing. It's not that hard, but make sure that you can take out a piece of paper and do it without looking and even uh, not using your short-term memory eventually. So where do we start? The starting point here is start with the definition. I abbreviate the EF apostrophe N of acceleration, and we'll work backwards. So the definition of acceleration, okay, I'm going to go acceleration at an instant uh, at some time is defined as the velocity over time, or the, der the derivative velocity with respect to time at that particular time, whatever that is, t1, t1, whatever it is. What I'm going to do is turn that into an integral. And this is going to train you for going on and doing other derivations, very similar kind of thing. So again, we know that the delta v, earlier to later, I'm going to do it general so that when I do problems, I can use any states I want, just as long as acceleration is constant. Delta v is equal to the integral from the earlier time to the later time of the acceleration as a function of time dt. Remember, that's a product. We're summation of the product. Okay, cool. 
So that's by definition. I could even write that as three lines as a definition. Now what I want from, from uh, you guys in my class is to say, okay, I, I want to show the steps and I want to put a few little words. They don't have to be complete, drawn out sentences. But I've made the assumption here, this is always, always true. Acceleration could be changing all the time. For example, we're going to do in this class this guy. Here's a case where the acceleration is not constant. The ramp, it's a constant acceleration. Here it's not constant. It's ever-changing. In fact, sinusoidally changing, and we'll derive that later in the course. So that would still work. If you can give me a function for acceleration, that'll still work. But now I'm going to make it specific. Aha! Now, special case. So the special case now is that acceleration equals a constant. So now that this, whatever I get beyond this doesn't work unless the acceleration is constant. Okay? All right, cool. So then what's that equal to? What does that tell me I can do? Oh, if the acceleration is a constant, that's just A, and I can pull it out. Acceleration is constant. It's a constant value. It doesn't change over time. And I do this. Now you should know this, that when you sum up the time from earlier to later, all that is is delta t earlier to later. So it's that simple. Start here with something that will always work. Now do something that's very special case but used a ton. Let's expand this. And you can write it any way you want. But that's V later minus V earlier. And so a very useful way to write this is going to be, hmm, let's see, I mean, however we want to do this, I think I'll do it this way. V at any later time is equal to V at any earlier time plus the acceleration that must be constant or else this doesn't work, times the time between earlier and later. Okay, So that's one equation. So V, delta V, the change of velocity from earlier to later is the velocity later minus the velocity earlier. This is the general definition, as we said in the last video. It's always true. But if the acceleration is a constant, then when you have a constant inside an integral, we can pull it out. The summation, or the integral of dt, the integral of d anything, is the change in that thing, if there's nothing in here. It's 1 times that. So you're summing up the time from earlier to later, which is just delta t. It's the time interval. Again, you, you don't necessarily have to write that as t later minus t earlier. It's just delta t. A lot of books will just write that as t, and they won't subscript it. But as a, as a new person to this, people get confused a lot across the country. I'm certain of it, having seen it in universities and so on. Okay, so we can check the units. Meters per second, meters per second, meters per second squared times second. That's meter per second. I'm good. Uh, I don't have to know... Uh, everything, I generally, I'll know some. I might know V later, you know, and I might know these guys so I could find V earlier. So you can find whatever, algebraically, once you do that. You just make it fit your problem. Okay, cool. So there's that. How are we doing here? Uh, hanging in there. All right, so next, let's do step two. And step two is to go to our other definition. You really don't have very many definitions the more familiar you get with it. So that means that the velocity at any moment, it doesn't matter, velocity at one, is defined as the derivative of the position or the rate at which position changes at that time. Well, we're going to write that as an integral. Okay, and so we've got delta x earlier to later 
is by definition, which is always true. So if you want, you can do this. You can say always, always. That's always true. And then you'd write here special. Okay. Not always true. Uh, is equal to the integral from earlier to later of the velocity as a function of time dt. Because we know that straight from the definition. It's just writing it both ways. Now, the, here's the little tricky part to get used to it. Well, what's the velocity as a function of time? Well, that, this would be a function that would give me the velocity at any time. That's general, but I want to make it specific. So only for constant Excel. So it's special, special. I can write this. It's the integral earlier to later. Hmm, what is that? Well, I just derived it. It's whatever velocity you start out at plus the acceleration times the time interval. And so I can write this in this way. And this is where we lose the delta t for mathematical purposes, but we keep the ve plus acceleration times time. Again, that t is a delta t, but at any instant. Okay, so I'm not going to go too much further than that, but you can see that this comes from above. Everybody cool with that? So that's, again, something you have to kind of get used to. And then, can you do that integral? I hope so. Right? This is the integral of this. Is that constant or is it variable? I can write it out. Let's go ahead and write the gory steps or the slow steps. VE dt, you don't have to pull it out, but we could separate it if we want. Okay. So that should look pretty easy. Velocity earlier is a particular thing. It's not something, that, it's just whatever it was. So that's ve, that comes out. Integral dt is delta t plus, ah, acceleration is constant again. So in this special case, acceleration pulls out the integral of t dt is t squared over 2. Okay, and how are we doing? Getting there? Getting close. So let's do this. That all comes down to the solution. And I like to write it this way. Delta x earlier to later. Make sure you can do this. Not just memorize it, but get it. Well, how far did you travel? What's the displacement, I should say? Well, it depends on the speed that you started at, that particular speed, and how long you went. If you just stay going, then that's a simple, simple equation. But if you speed up or slow down, if you speed up, you'll go farther. If you slow down, you won't go have as much displacement. So we'll go uh, times, rewriting that, one half the acceleration, which is constant, times that t, which is really a delta t. Delta t, earlier to later, this is getting pretty messy squared. So let me rewrite that. You could rewrite it too. Um, and then we've got it, and I'm going to tell you one more quick thing. I think we can squeeze it in. So I've got this delta x between two particular states that you need that are useful to you right now. V on the earlier state, the time between those states, plus one half the constant acceleration times the time between those states squared. Let's box it, wrap it up. Check the units, they're all in meters or any unit of length that you have, and we've got it.
And finally, if I can squeeze this in, keeping it short enough, getting actually getting over, um, I think that we'll we'll stop there and talk about it one more time.